Good morning. Welcome to Immaculate Heart of Mary Catholic Church. It is the third Sunday in Ordinary Time, and the readings may be found in your Red Worship 1116. It's 1116. Please join in our opening hymn found again in the Red Worship 604. Praise the Lord, you heavens adore him. That's 604. Please stand. Son and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Today we are welcoming in a special way some of our young people who are going, who are on retreat today in preparation for their sacrament of confirmation. So we hold them deep in prayer. Welcome them. Of course, we know we know them here. We, we welcome them and offer our prayers for them today. As we prepare to celebrate these mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. In the glory of God the Father. 
Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son we may abound in good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, saying, Set out for the great city of Nineveh, and announce to it the message that I will tell you. So Jonah made ready and went to Nineveh, according to the Lord's bidding. Now Nineveh was an enormously large city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began his journey through the city, and had gone but a single day's walking, announcing, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be destroyed. When the people of Nineveh believed God, they proclaimed a fast, and all of them, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw by their actions how they turned from their evil way, he repented of the evil that he had threatened to do to them. He did not carry it out. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm may be found in your blue gather, page 34, to you, O Lord. That's 3 4. From the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I tell you, brothers and sisters, the time is running out. From now on, let those having wives act as not having them, those weeping as not weeping, 
those rejoicing as not rejoicing, those buying as not owning, those using the world as not using it fully. For the world in its present form is passing away. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. As he passed by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting their nets into the sea. They were fishermen. Jesus said to them, Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. Then they abandoned their nets and followed him. He walked along a little farther and saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They too were in a boat, mending their nets. Then he called them. So they left their father Zebedee in the boat, along with the hired men, and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. This beautiful gospel of the calling of Jesus' first disciples, Simon and Andrew and James and John. And I want to zero into that one line that Jesus said to Andrew and to Simon Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. Of course, they, they themselves were fishermen, but here is Jesus I will make you fishers of men. It's beautiful to see at the very moment of his calling these two, he's already, in a sense, foretelling their mission. They will be sent out to draw others to himself, to Jesus. They will become fishers of men. So I want to just un unpack that a little bit. In a beautiful way, the most important part of that line is, I will make you. Now, of course, when you take it out of context, that it's not, I'm going to force you, but I'm going to create you. I'm going to form you to be fishers of men. I am going to do it, says Jesus. I am going to do it. And it's so, so important for us to see, especially in our own vocations, when we, when we remember as Christians even at the moment of our becoming Christians, there's a mission given to us of drawing others to Christ. But it's not first our responsibility. It's something that Jesus does in us. And it happens by spending time with him and even more time with him and more time with him so that he can form us so that we can be more greater images of him. That's, of course, what we do when we come here to Mass, and more than that. And I wanted to share a story. I think I shared it a couple of weeks ago after coming back from Seek, spending some time with, those, with that huge crowd of young people. 
in the, we, we get one of, the, one of the moments of, the, um, of that time we were away in St. Louis in this huge room, a room larger than this church, filled, filled, filled with young people as we adored the Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. It's beautiful to see all of these young people coming before him, being with him, being formed by him, being set afire by him. But I received a, a particular grace, and I, I, I felt the Lord saying, I am so hungry. Of course, hungry beautifully for, for all of those who are gathered, but in another way too, I'm hungry, or I'm so desirous to be eaten. I want to be given over. I want my life to be in yours. I want my life to be in everyone here. I want my life to be in everyone whom you encounter. It's this massive desire of Jesus to give his life to have his life loved and lived in the hearts of everyone. That, so in a beautiful way, I mean, of course, that desire is for all of us here to, to hear, to receive more deeply. But that encounter, my, my, my personal encounter, is one of the ways the Lord was informing my heart, teaching me to be a better fisher of men and women. Because now I, it's, still, it's still speaking to me every time I'm in front of anyone, no matter who they are, whether they have questions about the faith, whether they're far away, whether I don't know them yet, I'm listening to the Lord who's saying, I want them. I want my life in them more deeply. I desire them one day to eat me, to have me all the way. I want them. And even if I don't have the answer, even if I don't know everything, the Lord is still there. He's laboring and working. So it's just one of the ways. It's, so it reminds me, don't run away too quickly. <laughs> Stay there, even if it's uncomfortable. So it's just the way the Lord, the Lord transformed my heart a little bit. But he wants to do that in all of our hearts in a very personal, particular way. And we allow him to make us into fishers of men and women when we spend time with him. Again, that's what we are doing here, but it's what we do every time we come before the Lord in the Eucharist, when we adore him, when we open up the scriptures, when we are quiet and allow him to pour out his love more deeply upon us. He is forming us, he's giving us himself, changing our hearts, but also making us more for others, to be better radiant images of him. And we need to do it. That's part of Jesus' invitation. Come with me. Come after me. Be with me. So again, this is what he does. It's his work. But we just have to give him permission to do it. We have to let him do, do that in us. Okay, I don't want to step away from that because that is the, the primary point. This is his work. But then I just want to open up that, that phrase that he uses, fishers of men and women, fishers. Now, I am not a fisherman. Sometimes people think I am because I love going up to the boundary waters. But I just like to go to the boundary waters to sit and look at the beauty. That's all I do. <laughs> but I wish I knew more about fishing. But the, and, of course, the, the scriptures here, they, they speak about a fishing, that, about throwing out nets and bringing, bringing fish in. And I know absolutely nothing about that kind of fishing. But I have watched people fish. I've, I've done my own fishing at, at times and, uh, with using a line and a lure and, and bait. And so I know uber basic about it. And if any fishermen or women want to correct me afterwards, please do, but I'm going to use this analogy in the way that it works for me, okay, for this. So in order to catch fish, of course, you need a lure and a bait. And some, some lures work better with some kind of fish than others. Some bait works better with some kind of fish than others. And on some days, that changes, and you need to test and, in a way, play with the fish, 
to see what they're biting that particular day. And of course, the, there are different times when the fish are on the, on the surface. Other times, they're deeper. Some fish act differently in different lakes, depending on what's there or how, how it's fished. And so you have to know, kind of get to know the fish. And that's, that's my main point. When we are drawing others to Christ, it's not a mechanical thing. There's not one line that convinces all people in a certain, pro in a certain way. In order to draw others, we have to get to know them. And we have to, to put it in more of gospel language, we have to become their friends. And that's real, really friends. Not friends in a manipulative way. I'm just going to get to know you so I can give you Jesus in the end. Even though that might be part of our de desire. But we have to befriend people. Get to know them. Allow ourselves to know their hearts. What their real questions are. And then, and then of course, slowly begin to reveal to them what Christ has already done in us. And draw them more deeply, more deeply. This last week, we, we had a, a beautiful speaker come to us, Dr. William Stevenson. He's going to come again this week. And if you missed this last week, you can still come this week. It's, it's a, a little bit of a different topic, so you won't be missing anything. You can come in, come in new. He spoke this last week about our life in Christ. But one of our parishioners, who I think is here this morning, courageously asked him, so what, what do we say? Are, are you, will you say anything about how to draw in our family members, those who have, who have, who have gone away from the faith? What are some things that, that we, can, we can share with them? And he pointed out a couple of things that was very insightful. And it was, it was looking into people's hearts. And he said that, that typically when people move away from the faith, it's not merely an intellectual problem with the faith, although that might have something to do with it. But often, people have been hurt in some way by the church. And we all, I, mean, I think if we do a, a brief look into our own hearts, perhaps there is some level of being hurt here as well, whether it's in our own parish or the church abroad. But that, that, that hurts people. And so some people are hurting and others um, often, or, or, or at times, have some struggle with the, with the teaching of the church, which they cannot, they, they can't live up to just yet. And so they, they struggle, and so they, they can't, it's hard to come into the church because they're struggling with some moral teaching of the church. And it's be just beautiful to see that sometimes that's happening in people's hearts. And for us to know that can be really helpful because it affects how we are with them. If they're hurting, if there's something that, they, that, that the church has hurt them, then a way to, to help the healing is not by telling them, you just got to come back to church, but it's by listening, drawing out the pain, affirming that, yes, the, 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 the reality of the pain. And then when it's right, if it ever is, it, you know, our relationships can be complicated. But to invite them into deeper healing, which is what Jesus gives to us, it's through forgiveness. I forgive so-and-so who is in the church for not acting like a true Christian and making me feel like whatever. And to, but to be honest and that to claim the, the pain that was given can help someone to receive deeper healing, and so to be greater, more freely to live their life in the church. And for someone who is struggling with some moral aspect of the church, perhaps because it's hard for them to live that way, one of the things we can always remind them of is that while the church does have, we have a beautiful moral teaching, right and wrong, but also the, the, the beauty of living in freedom in Jesus, but even if we sin, there is mercy. There is mercy on top of mercy. We all know that in a way we struggle with the church's moral teaching because we are all sinners. But there is mercy. So just reminding them of the, of the beauty of mercy. 
And then, of course, lean into that, to the truth, all the more. To, and, and to begin to reveal for them, you can do this. To give them encouragement, to stand with them, even as they struggle. So there are some, just some ways of, of working with someone's heart. And of course, we, I, I know that I'm way oversimplifying. But just to go back to the very beginning, the first part is to be a friend and to enter into real relationship with them. That's how we draw people more deeply into the life of Christ, to be their friend and not to step aside. And then, of course, to go back to the very, very beginning, we allow Christ to form our hearts. He speaks to them, to us. He reveals his love. And so today we, we listen to his invitation, come after me, come, be with me, come, receive from me, and I will make you into fishers of men and women. Stand together and proclaim our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With confidence in our Father, we turn to him with our needs. For the church, that by our actions and words we may be a light to all the nations, to the very ends of the earth. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that all nations may find the courage to avoid revenge and retaliation and respond to conflict with mercy and peace. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have chosen a life of ministry, of following in the footsteps of the first disciples and becoming fishers of other disciples, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That society may grow in protecting the dignity of all human life, from conception to natural death, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who suffer from diseases and illnesses, that they may receive the treatment, care, and comfort they need, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the special intentions in our parish, for those who are sick or homebound, for those who have died, for Rich Anderson, for whom this Holy Mass is being offered, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. God of justice and mercy, grant us the humility and wisdom to recognize our sinfulness and need for repentance. Listen to the prayers we make and grant them as you granted the prayers 
of a repentant Nineveh. Who we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. As the gifts are being prepared, please join in singing out of your red worship, 774, Two Fishermen. That's 774. and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O oh Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Bernard our Bishop and all, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior. Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
As we approach God's table, please join in singing out of your blue gather 494 anthem. That's 494. <laughs> Then at your coming on 
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life we may always glory in your gift, through Christ our Lord. Amen. We have our announcements for the week. Dr. William Stevenson will be here again this Wednesday, as I mentioned, January 24th at 6.30 p.m. This week he will be talking about forming and informing our conscience. You're still wel welcome and encouraged to come, even if you couldn't come this last week. IHM will be hosting a memorial blood drive on Thursday, February 1st, from 1 to 6 p.m. Please see the bulletin on how you can reserve a time slot. The Remembrance Luncheon is set for Thursday, January 25th at noon. Please call the parish office to let us, to let us know if you would like to attend. Our women's group, WIM, will be hosting speaker Father Stephen McMichael on Tuesday, January 30th at 7 p.m. Father Stephen is from the Franciscan Retreat Center in Prior Lake and will be speaking on Mary Magdalene and the Risen Christ. All women are welcome and invited to bring a friend. Mark your calendars for our Mardi Gras social on Saturday, February 10th, after following the 4.30 p.m. Mass. All are invited to come and enjoy an evening of appetizers, beverages, and a music performance by the Jazz Ensemble. Reception Jazz. There will be no charge. If you plan on attending, please drop a token in the Mardi Gras box on the table in the gather space. There's a poster in the gather space with more details. Envelopes for the retired religious collection and under, are under the bulletin racks in the gather space this weekend. If you'd like to donate, please take an envelope home with you and return it in next weekend's collection basket. Checks should be made out to IHM. And then finally, just a reminder for anyone who is interested in joining me on the Greek trip, the Greek Isles trip in the footsteps of St. Paul, just to sign up for that. And then we also have an informational meeting on February 1st at 7 p.m. in Fireside Hall. And then finally, for our final blessing, I, I want to also just give a blessing for all of our young people who are gathered here for the retreat. So I'm going to raise my hands in blessing. If you'd like to raise your hand in blessing, please do so as well. The Lord be with you. Amen. Heavenly Father, we ask that you send your blessing upon these young people gathered here. Send your spirit upon their hearts. Set their hearts even more deeply afire with love for you. Remind them of how deeply you are in love with them. And open their eyes to see your, your greatest and deepest desires for them. We ask you that they would be open to receive all that you desire them to receive in this retreat. We ask this in Christ, through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
May Almighty God bless all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. As we ready ourselves to go, please join in singing out of your blue gather, 500, Lord, when you came. That's 500. But nets for fishing, my dear.